Hi, it's episode 22, season 2 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Joining me this week, Bex from Portsmouth. Good evening. And back for the first time this season, Ali Hassan from the Czech Republic. Hello. Right, um, I think we should begin with today's game. So it's um, Saturday the 23rd of January. It's just gone quarter past five and um, hands up who is still <laughs> finding it very hard to be still <laughs> very hard to contain themselves yeah yeah I, had I, was, I, had lipstick on my ears. I was gonna say something else but um, i shall refrain um <laughs> that was some game and some goal um deli alley um that we were just talking up before the before the podcast and i mean we all said best goal of the season probably so far um and i've i've commented that I thought in terms of technique and execution it reminded me of Paul Gascoigne's goal against Scotland in Euro 96 yeah definitely I've still got it on the loop right now I'm watching it on the <laughs> and, I, and I, I just can't get enough of it I mean it was bloody brilliant what an unbelievable goal uh, look at him just takes it uh, over the guy's head and whack beautiful he, he must have so much confidence it's unbelievable that guy it was just amazing. Beautiful goal to watch. Just stunning. And in, the saddest thing about that is that Chapley's goal was equally fantastic, <laughs> but it's been completely overshadowed now. So nobody cares that A, Chapley scored because we were winning at that point anyway, and B, that he scored a beautiful goal. And on any other day, we'd be saying, wow, yeah, that was stunning. But now yeah. it's all about Deli Alley, the control. Yeah, but to be honest, when Chadley did get his goal, it was more of a relief than anything else because <laughs> um, I definitely wanted that two-goal cushion because, uh, you know, although this season we've been uh, less Spursy than usual, um, I just didn't want it to come back and haunt us anymore. So I thought that the second, the third goal was definitely a killer for, for us. It was brilliant. It's funny how, it, you know, the game... Game started off with a lot of lot of possession, and they they were they weren't really threatening. Some of the, I think I, I don't know what what commentary you, you're listening to, but um, Ray Houghton was one of the co-commentators on the stream that I was listening to, and 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 uh, a lot of the comments were about how Palace had shut up shop, and tactically they got it right, but they yeah they got men behind the ball, but um, frankly I think they were quite <clears> lucky to to contain us and then even more lucky to to get a goal on the break I think we had 80 possession of the play initially that dropped to about 70 but still very high and we were pressing them and we looked dangerous and you know it's quite frustrating going in at half time 1-0 down and second half I thought that continued um, we got the equaliser which was more than we deserved um, you know and in terms of performances I thought everybody did did, did really well and then obviously Deli Ali's fantastic goal and then as you say Ali um, Chadley's goal at the end just gave us that great strike but it just gave us that cushion that bit of relief um, added relief in addition to the um, to the relief of um, Kane's strike um, yeah um, I thought the, the only thing that sort of put up a Bit of a damper on the whole performance was Jan Vertonghen. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, he should have just cleared that ball. Really, he done well to sort of get it off the guy in the first place, and instead of just sort of hoofing it up, and I know that it's not our culture these days, um, I just wished he'd hoofed it up, and he did it about a minute later, hoofed it up, and it went for a throw in in their half. But mm. at that moment, he sort of overhit it towards Ericsson, and then the ball came back, and um, once Zaha crossed it. Um, he was sort of wrong-footed and he was unlucky, but it, we were sort of begging for it to happen, really. I mean, 
first sort of 20 minutes, it was all Tottenham. And then we started to sort of um, allowing them back into the game. And I thought that, um, you know, like Hugo, love him, but his, his kicking sort of put us into trouble a couple of times. And they, they sort of got a bit encouraged by that, I think. But uh, we, can, we can sort yeah. of forgive that because it is Hugo, and he thought he did redeem himself afterwards with a, with a fantastic cup. Yeah, of face. So. yeah, exactly. He did, but you know, but you, you know, really, you don't want to give uh, Palace any hope at all. Really, I mean, they they were had so much uh, um, desire to sort of win after that because you know that was their first goal in eight hours. You know, they hadn't scored well at eight hours and one minute. They said on the TV. Um, and it was unbelievable that suddenly their tails were up. Completely. They still haven't scored. We gifted that to them. And yeah. It was a crying shame because I don't think Jan had a bad game. Not at all. Not at all. But then they had, uh, after the goal, they had the bank of five and a bank of four. And we were trying to get past that all the time. It was almost unbelievable. We were sort of calling out for some kind of ticker tacker uh, football around the penalty area to, to try and do something. But... Um, uh, it was it was a little bit frustrating because of the amount of possession and uh, the game that we had. So his his um his injury looked quite serious. It was one of those where yeah. th- there wasn't any I couldn't see any physical contact and he just sort of turned his knee and then you could see straight away he was wincing and he was in a lot of agony and um you know a player like Jan isn't somebody who's gonna no, not this season he's not, not, not this season yeah. Stop, is he? I mean, he got elbowed in the face by Connor Wickham, and then they, I think, yeah. yeah, sorry, Connor Wickham did that a couple of times, and yeah. I was really surprised there was nothing from the officials. No, no, they just sort of, sort of turned a blind eye. Really, I thought, well, mm. Atkinson, it's Atkinson, isn't it? He's a bit dodgy, that guy, anyway. A bit but, of a knob. Yeah, quite frankly. Bit. Yeah, a little bit, but uh, he, I think it's some kind of. It looks like a. a like a medial ligament or something like that. I hope mm. it's not, but it does look a bit serious. Well, we've got, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the next game against Colchester a bit later, but we, we've got them next. I wasn't in, in, envis- envisaging that he would start in that game anyway. No, no, um, no. So that's fine. Um, and then a few days after, well, I don't know, 10 days from now, we've got Norwich away and then uh, on the Tuesday and then the following Saturday, Wat- Watford at home. Um, it would be good if he was back for... Norwich or failing that Watford um, if it's more serious than that then whilst I, I, I like the look of Vimmer from what I've seen of him it's breaking up that partnership could could prove costly um, I know that everybody's going to, well a certain people group of our fans will probably say we should dip into the transfer market and buy a centre back um, as well as a striker, um, I hope that Pochettino doesn't do that because I, I think that We've got the cover in Vimmer. We've also got um, Dyer who can drop back yeah. and, and play as a centre back. Um, and whilst that would take something away from um, the midfield, we've got lots of other players. We've got, you know, Ben Slab came on today. Um, we've got Mason to come back. So we, we've got other options in midfield should yeah. should we drop Dyer yeah. back. Um, so I, I hope that, I'm sure that we won't do anything rash in the transfer market. Yeah. I don't I don't think we will and the fact that Vimmer played on Wednesday night I think was a big confidence boost for him personally. I don't think he did anything wrong when he came on today. Not I'm sure Poch has it Poch has it balanced so that he and Toby will have played together because if Jan is out for any length of time, Vimmer is the man, I think. Mm. Yeah, I mean he's definitely a good player. He's very yeah. comfortable on the ball. He's got a nice left foot and sometimes you see him sort of coming out of defence with the ball and doing things. So long as he prioritises uh, the defending um, and if he gets a chance to go forward and help the, the guys because we do play a high line obviously but to me he looks quite comfortable I've got no qualms about him being in the team if if Jan is injured so I'm not too fussed about that I definitely wouldn't dip in the transfer market for a defender um, so well that's my view on it anyway I think it, I think he's good cover which you'll have to see on, the, on, on that one and, and how serious the injury is, um, fingers crossed. Um, players that really stood out for me today, um, I thought Kieran Trippier did really well again. Um, I love him. Yep. And... I really do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marked difference. I mean, I do like Walker. This season, Walker is 
uh, really, really good, particularly sort of going forward. And this year, he seems to have got his defending much better. Um, but the, the main difference I see with Walker and with Trippier is that when Trippier goes forward, he's got an end product. He gets the ball across. He crossed about five balls in play, left foot and right. Yeah. They've always been dangerous. That's what I like about him. He And he, and he is quite a good defender. Yeah, sometimes he has these little lapses. But uh, so far, I don't think it's cost us. And he's looking more assured. Do you know... Yeah, certain players, um, Dele, Dele Alli being being a prime example, they they hit the ground running straight away. You know, we we could we could see glimpses of that in pre season. We saw glimpses of that when he came on as a sub against, I think it was Leicester away, and yeah. scored. Um, that's not true of most players. I think a lot of players um, take their time. I think particularly with fullbacks, they often find that sometimes at the mark of a good, good fullback isn't doing anything spectacular but it's just be it's just being good from a positional sense but also just looking self-assured um and just looking confident and and not looking nervous and 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 Trippier at the moment is starting to project that I feel you know um the other player, obviously, De- Deli Ali was was superb, and I thought really bossed the midfield. I think Sun did decent. Eric Eric did okay. Kane, um, Dembele. I think Dembele was just a beast. What a what a player he was. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. But I, I would say that he didn't have a, an outstanding game. Um, but when he gets the ball, I mean, it's very difficult to get it off him. Although it did happen once or twice today that um, a, a ball got sort of nicked. Um, off him or a, a misplaced pass but other than that he was you know he commands the the ball but I would have liked to have seen him absolutely boss the game today I would have liked to have seen that but uh, it was quite difficult I would say because of the amount of people that Palace had behind the ball you know Dyer was the other one he because you know when I saw the team at the beginning I liked the team I thought yeah Dyer and Dembele in the middle this is just what we need um Unfortunately, I thought that Dyer also didn't sort of have one of his outstanding games, but sort of solid enough, but not an outstanding game. Yeah, nothing special. I don't know what you thought about that. Um, I thought he, I thought he did okay. I was surprised that he was taken <laughs> off. So was I. I was sat here going, "Why? Why have they done that? And why put Chadley on? That's rubbish." And then, of course, come the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, that's why yeah. Poch is a manager and I'm sat on the sofa watching this. Well, yeah? that's exactly right. But I did, think <laughs> good, I did think it was a good change at the time because only because of the fact that uh, Dyer didn't have much influence on the game and there wasn't much that needed to be broken mm. up. You know, uh, we dominated the game and we didn't really need to have the two in there. Although, having said that, uh, Delhi, Delhi did drop in a little bit behind uh, when Dyer went off. <laughs> But Deli Ali is a box to box, isn't he? So he just turns up at the other end to smash a ball home like that. So, yeah. I would say one thing. Sorry to uh, continue here, sure. but I thought that um, Danny Rose. I think he's got something wrong with him against people like Zaha because he looked really nervous today. Um, yeah, on one hand he was unlucky not to score and he was sort of bombing up the left. But on the other hand, every time Zaha got the ball, he was sort of scared stiff of him. I don't know if you had the same view. Yeah, he was a little bit hesitant. Maybe it's because he wasn't skipper this week. Um, but he yeah. was quite almost reluctant. Yeah, I mean generally he does quite well, but I'm not sure if it's that you know Zaha is such a taller player or something like that. And he's not a sort of typical winger. Uh, sorry, he's not um, a typical guy that he, fa- he he faces week in, week out, is he? So, um, I don't know, he, he just looked a little bit off. But anyway, I don't want to take away from the team's performance at the end. He got the result, which was brilliant. The thing that surprised me about Dyer was, um, you're, you're right, he, 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 we almost didn't need him. Um, I was, but I was surprised because I thought it was a bit harsh on him. But I could see why... I could see why it was done. I was just surprised that it was so early in the game, perhaps. Yeah. And 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 Pochettino does um, tend to leave substitutions a lot later on. Um, 
I don't actually I don't know what what time he was taken off, but it certainly felt early in the second half. Um, but it you know proved to be the right call. Um, yeah. And bear in mind, Dyer did play a full ninety in the middle of the week. Um, so maybe maybe there were some tired legs as, as, as well. But um, there you go. Pochettino gets paid to, to make decisions like that, and and he, and he got it right. Um, Another goal for Kane. Another goal for Kane, yeah. Um, I'd forgotten about that, yes. And, and almost an assist. I, I suppose you would say a pre-assist. Because it was his cross that landed on Ericsson's head, wasn't it, for, Ch- uh, for uh, Deli Alley to smack in. So Kane got it on the right, didn't he? Yeah. And he sort of swung the ball right across the penalty area. I thought, where's that going? <laughs> and Ericsson was there to just sort of stoop down with a little cushioned header. And then Deli Alley did the rest. So, brilliant. I'm buzzing. <laughs> okay, just to prove that this podcast really is live and we record it at the time we say it, we do, just under two minutes into the West Ham Man City game, yes. West Ham are one up. Come on. Come on, you spammers. <laughs> Pike. <and dicks. laughs> so, Jav, you had the table up earlier. That means. How does that affect um, City and us? Well, um... assuming that. It's going to stay if, exactly if, like that, this well, for the it's, remaining 80-odd minutes. Yeah, OK. Well, it, it, we're, at the moment, we're on 42 points, so we're one point behind City in third. Okay. So if it stays like that, then we'll still be one point behind City mm-hmm. um, in third, yeah. but we'll have a better goal difference. Uh, yeah. but at the moment, we've got 22, they've got 22. Uh, minus one for the goal for West Ham would be 20, 21. 21, then. yep. And our defence is the best, only 19 conceded, and it will still remain the best, so... Yeah. Um, that's fine. I mean, none of the results, both with the City <clears throat> game and um, Woolwich, I think, playing tomorrow, um, yeah. irrespective of what happens in those games, we're still going to be fourth. But yeah, we're consolidating basically. Yeah. Where's um, Where's Manu? When's Manu playing? They lost. They lost to Southampton. Oh, today. Charlie Austin scored on his debut. <laughs> oh, wonderful! At Old Trafford. That's why. That's why I didn't want us to sign him. I want <laughs> Southampton to sign him so that they could score a winner against uh, Man United. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're five points ahead of ahead of United. If the West Ham, the flip side of, of the West Ham um, result, if it stays the way it does, then they will be within four points of us. But that's fine. I'm not not sorry about that. Um, I had a question in from this isn't on the running order, but only because it's it's just come in. But I had a quick question from Greg Taylor who says, um, one word to describe Ali's goal. Um, for him, he says audacious. Gaza esque. I, I don't know because you get to a stage, don't you, where you run out of superlatives. Yeah. Orgasmic. Mean... <laughs> That's mine. Orgasmic. Orgasmic. Oh, that's a good one. Very good. Orgasm. I've just yeah. I've, I've just been on Twitter and um, your mate ASD Jav yep. has just hashtagged Pelly Alley, which I quite like. That's a good one. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still watching. <laughs> I'm still watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm put a on this and let you see it. It's just okay. So you've been watching the same vine of the same goal for thirty minutes. That's, yeah. Well. <laughs> Stupendous. Oh. All right, there's another word. <laughs> it's very Superb, difficult. sensational, <laughs> technically just brilliant. Yeah. I, I, for me, orgasmic. And I've got to say, it's very difficult to record the pod and wipe up at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah. Too much inf- way too much information. I, I need more wine now. <laughs> You're on the wine, are you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, this was a conversation that, that we were having over Twitter with Nikki. Um, yeah. The theory is that you can have seven glasses of wine and it's only one dog wine because of course there are seven oh, dog right. years to one yeah. year yeah so yeah. that's what we were doing so yeah so you're having seven three goals off. is 21 drinks yeah, that's not bad is it yeah that's not bad what what sort of what are you on who cares it doesn't matter does it? <laughs> I've got a job. after a, after a result like that really it just yeah. who needs booze in all fairness so yeah. we again just to prove this is live. We had another question just come in from Carol Hayward who says, "Delhi Alley, young footballer of the fucking year." Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything to discuss. I mean, surely no. he's surely he's a shoe in. Um, I mean, which other young footballers? I think Lukaku, who's been knocking around for a while. He's I think twenty three, and I think he just about falls into the category. But um, it's got to be Delhi Alley. 
Absolutely. This, this, guy, this guy has come from League One, so let's hope Colchester haven't got any like him in their team because the guy is just un, unbelie- unbelievable. He's brilliant. I mean, to just fit into the Premier League like he'd been there all his life, it's unbelievable. I'm going to hold my hands up and say, you know, at the beginning of the season, when, when we did the first few podcasts, everybody, not just... just um, listeners to the pods or people who, or, you know, the guests that would appear on the pod but just generally speaking to lots of Spurs fans and, and reading stuff on social media everybody was wax lyrical about um, about Ali and I was a bit more well yeah he, he is good he looks good he's technically good he looks the part all of those things but let's but just, just, kid, yeah. but he's just let's just not get too carried away because we don't want to put too much pressure on, on, on his shoulders and you know particularly not just Spurs fans, but football fans in general, we tend to be quite fickle. We tend to suddenly find a hero, and it might be, it might have been, for example, Son earlier in this season. Son comes into the team. Son comes out of the team. Oh, we're missing Son. You know, how much better is it? And then Son comes back into the team and he's not playing well. Um, that sort of mentality really does my head in. But Deli Ali has just proved it consistently week in, week out. Um, he's some player and he's only going to get better. Um yeah, for me, young young footballer of the year, um, and I, and I would imagine he would also be. And um, there's norm, n- normally six people that are in the running for the PFA <clears throat> Player of the Year. Yeah, well, I'm um, thinking, why can't he be nominated for both? Because um, it doesn't matter how young you are. If you're Player of the Year, you're Player of the Year. So, so the last player to be nominated and win both was Bale. Yeah, and previous to that was Ronaldo. Yeah, and that is a fantastic heritage to have to live up to. Exactly. So, but isn't Kane? Didn't Kane get the Young Player of the Year, the year last year? He did, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a fantastic reflection on Potch and the team as a whole. If we can do it two successive years, yeah. that says an awful lot. And like I said last week, kind of believe any young player wouldn't want to come to Spurs at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Looking to see what they're doing because even when Vimmer came on, he's what twenty three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not exactly ancient. No. And to be in that position, which is generally older players. It says yeah. an awful lot for the way that um, Poch has the team playing. Yeah. I, I believe this is the Poch uh, um, philosophy. You know, Jav, you, you mentioned earlier about uh, guys hitting the you know hitting the ground running and stuff. And I think it's all to do with Poch's style and he gets them playing in us in such a way that uh, it's easy. I mean, they just, just get in there, do what they're supposed to do. Uh, without any qualms and just get on with it and, and I think that's the way it's going so uh, that's what I think is the reason for it he, he, there is a philosophy play the ball simple do the right things you know if you lose the ball get back into position make things difficult for the other side win the ball back and get on the attack again it seems to be working for us so you know worked for Southampton before us and now he's got much better players yep. uh, to work with Um Plus, bringing them through the academy. Oh God, I'm just so looking forward to the to the future. It's <laughs> you know, it, it's the best. I mean, I've been going for yonks, right? <laughs> um, this is really, apart from the '80s team with Hoddle and Archibald and our dealers and all that lot. This is definitely the most excited I've been since. The, the, the guys are just unbelievable. It's a great team to watch. Why yeah. wouldn't you want to sit and watch it? There is always something happening. And you never quite know what Spurs are going to do. You always hope that there's three points at the end of it. But even today, you were thinking and hoping that they would pull something out of the bag. Or is it going to be another Newcastle? (laughs) But it was just amazing. Just fantastic, stunning football to watch. City have equalised. So it's one all. I don't suppose draws are that bad these days. I mean, I think... Um, when when we've got a team above us and a team below us, I don't mind if they both draw because to me a draw is almost as good as a defeat. I mean it's it's closer to a defeat than to a win, that's for sure. With one point instead of three. Um, so you know if if uh, teams around us only draw, then yep. it's, you know what I mean they're just both dropping two points. Yep. I'm quite happy with that. So I don't mind it too much so long as you know City don't win. I don't mind if they draw or if City lose. That's the I don't I really care about them. I can't. It, yeah, okay, the game is on, but I'm not really concentrating because all my effort is still thinking about Deli Ali's goal <laughs> that you're still watching. <laughs> no, my fucking <laughs> vine just turned off. I think the iPad got too hot. 
<laughs> it just switched itself up. <laughs> I'm going to have complaints about that. Fantastic. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You could save the vine for later and yeah. watch it in a quiet moment. Um, so we've got Norwich next in, in 10 days. I'm not going not gonna to do a, a, any predictions on, on, on that. Before that, we've got... Um, We've got Colchester in the FA Cup. So we played, actually, we should just go re- rewind briefly back to the middle of the week. So we played Leicester um, middle of the week, won that 2 0, another clean sheet. Vorm started in goal. Interesting team selection because you had Vorm starting in, in goal. I suppose that was expected, but I thought he did okay. He didn't let himself down in any way. He looked, looked, looked solid. Dare I say it, possibly his best game in a Spurs shirt yeah, so far. Yeah. Um, it was interesting that he played Dyer back as yep. as centre back with with Vimmer. Um, full backs obviously were Davis and Walker for that game, and then we didn't have Kane up front. Son did really well and got a goal. Chadley did okay, um, and the midfield Benzlab came back in the team. Now we've got a question a bit uh, um, on on Nabil yeah. a bit later, but um, overall I thought we we b- bossed that game. Deserved to go through. Um, and the fact that Dyer played as a centre back, as I was saying earlier, whilst we it, it meant that we'd lost his presence in mid, mid, midfield, it gave an opportunity to others like Nabil Bentalab to come in and do a job. Um, so I just think that again shows the strength and depth we've got. And... I mean, Carroll went Bentalab, I mean, to boot, um, you know, my. Might opinion I, I mean i love carol and and uh, at the beginning i thought you know when i first saw the team news i thought oh, no not not, not vorm i mean i don't want i like vorm and i know that he sometimes makes a mistake but he does look like quite a good keeper but you just want it's the fa cup and you just want to progress and you just think loris you know you want loris in there. i didn't mind the dire and wimmer in central defense but um you know, when I saw Carroll and Bentaleb in that part, and we are playing Leicester at the King Power Stadium, you know, uh, Carroll is a little bit lightweight. Bentaleb, you know, he's hardly played. And then no no cane up top. I thought, oh, no, here we go. And then after the first minute, Dio gives a ball away, didn't he? Um, and they had a shot on goal. Um, but after that, you know, I thought that after sort of, 10 minutes or whatever. First 10 minutes, I think, Leicester had. After that, yeah, I think we started to dominate the game and the possession and, and uh, we started to look very good. And and Tom Carroll started to spray the ball around beautifully all over the place and I started to eat my own words there, you know. It, it I think, nice. but this is what we said before, Vaughan needs games. Yeah. And Wednesday night was the second time we played, it played in a really short space of time. So yeah. he had that little bit of confidence, and he was fine. Yeah, I mean, he did everything okay, you know, and he he, he actually pulled off two saves. Yeah. In the game, uh, which kept us in it, to be honest. Yeah, and he was the keeper that you expect to have sat there. The bizarre thing was looking up and seeing no Toby in defence. Yeah, it was a bit weird, but that was like, well, where is he then? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but... I think T- Toby's played every game this season. Well, actually, was the that... only game he didn't every... play was against yeah. um, Woolwich in in, yeah. in the Capital One when when Fazio yeah. did. Played every league game, yeah, every league yeah. game. Yeah, so it was played. it was completely bizarre to look up and not see him there. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. But the boys did fine, and again, it's Poch has everybody playing the same way. So when they come into the side, nobody has to adjust to anything it is almost a seamless transition everybody and, knows their role within the team yeah and it doesn't matter what formation he plays it doesn't matter who he's got playing in the team it the the exchange of players in and out is the same yeah even though the players are very different so i think that says a lot for his playing his managerial style um yeah. and a lot for what he's got going on at the club um, i'll tell you what pissed me off a lot was the I don't want to swear so much, but the commentators <laughs> on BBC, I wish they'd shut the F up. Oh, my you know, God, they, they were, were constant... so biased. Oh, Jesus, they just love Leicester so much. It was unbelievable. And obviously, Lineker's got sort of... He hasn't got divided ties because he's a Leicester boy. I know he played for Spurs. And, you know, if Leicester are going to go out, then better to go out to Spurs than, say, Arsenal or anyone like that. But he loves Leicester, and that's the way it is. But oh, they just constantly kept on loving them didn't they and you know didn't ma- 
you know, the only reason we played well was because Leicester played shit and the tinker man kept tinkering. Excuse me, we made eight changes as well, or nine changes to our team. Yeah, and um, Le- come on, Leicester, you're still in this game. 2 nil down and it's 89 minutes. You fuckwits. Yeah. They're yeah, quite and- clearly not, and they weren't in it all game. Yeah, I didn't feel you know, they were. I didn't feel they were a threat. Yeah, and Jonathan Pearce, just as he was saying, oh, you know, and should Spurs have started with a stronger team and with the big guns and all that? And then you know, Son put that beautiful ball through to Chadley, and <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a lovely goal. Yeah. But it was it was something. priceless though, just to see Ian Wright's face at the end of it because he, he could not think of anything nice to say. Yeah, he gave us nothing. Do, so, do you know what? Thank. thank God for Jermaine Genus because oh he yeah, was brilliant yeah he, he was great but the other guys they were just not bigging up Leicester all the time and we were only good because Leicester weren't but I was just going to say that we talked about Tom Carroll that that the timing of his pass to to Son uh, when he went through uh, and Son's goal was in my opinion explosive and dare I say it a striker's goal. Mm. It was definitely a striker's goal. He, he took it like a striker. He pushed it out of his feet and he whacked it in. Um, and I know one of the questions later is about strikers. Or, let, or, let, hold that thought because you're absolutely right. There is, there is, a, <laughs> there is, a, there is a there is a question a question on that. Um, just on Vorm, I thought it was really nice that that he played well for two reasons. One, because you want him to play well and you you want to have that confidence in him to come into the team when he needs to and, and, and do a job, whether that's through choice or through the fact that, say, Lloris is injured. And, 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 I, and I don't like it when fans get on his back. But also because it was Leicester City. And, you know, contrast that, it was a year ago tomorrow. Yeah, this this weekend last, last year that we, that we did a podcast. And I think, Bex, you were on it with me. And um, it was after the um, cup tie against Leicester when we lost at White Hart Lane. And I, I remember the day um, when where I was, and we were all feeling deflated, and and Vorm um, didn't have a good game. Mm. And it's and it's nice that he had a good game against Leicester City, and hopefully that's that's a um, a memory that's that's exactly that, just just something. So is he going to be away. the um, FA Cup keeper then? And keep Hugo for League and Europa, perhaps? Or is it another example of Poch and his ability to swap players in and out? I think that if you if you go back to last season, um, and also this, you've got Lloris playing in the League and the Europa. And in the Capital One Cup and the FA Cup, Vorm has been the keeper. But if you recall last season in the Capital One Cup, when we got to the final, Vorm was, was dropped and Lloris played against Chelsea, and I think if if we pro- I think if we progress in the FA Cup and get to the final, and particularly if we if we play a good team, um, I think sentiment will, will go out of the window, and I don't think at that point Pochettino is going to say, "Well, um, Vorm, you've 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 done a good job, and and you deserve your place." I wouldn't be surprised if if Lloris starts. That's just my. Um, yeah, that was going to be one of my questions to you two about that because you know not trying to. Um, stick too far forward um, but if we do get through to the final of the FA Cup um, what will happen and I, I guess that he would do the same he would take out Vorm and put uh, Luis in so uh, what do you think Bex? It seems really harsh doesn't it that Vorm doesn't necessarily do anything wrong Yeah. and yet he's dropped yeah. Just that happened last year didn't it for the League Cup yeah and it happened a few years ago um, when we had uh, Paul Robinson in goal and a uh, uh, Czech guy, Radek Czerny. Mm-hmm. And Czerny was playing all the games and doing very well, got us to the final, and then in the final they played Robinson. Yeah, and I, I think it was against Blackburn in, in Cardiff or something. Uh, 2001, 2002? Yeah, something. Yeah. No, 2001. Oh, yeah. well, it was, well, wasn't it 2008 against... 2000. Um... Arsenal in the semi, and then and then Chelsea, and in the final, Ch- um, Robinson played against Chelsea. Oh no, yeah, we won that one. And, uh, it was it was before that then. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I, it was just a, a thing about the keepers, you know. Um, one gets you to the final, the other one plays. So, so the, there was a quote from Pochettino last season, and, and I can't remember it word for word. So I'm going to sl- paraphrase it slightly, but um, it was something along the lines of that: you, you're as a Tottenham um, player, you're employed to play for the club, not the team. 
Yeah, he said. He said, when you sign for Tottenham, you're signing to train. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it, and it's up and to I, me to, to, and it's up to you to sort of prove yourself, and it's up to me to put you in the side. And I, I and I understand as a professional, and just you know, even as a fan, if you want to play, you you, well, you want to play in the, in the you, you you want to be part of the starting eleven, and particularly for for a big event like a, a cup final, you want to be on the team sheet. If you're on the bench, or worse still, if you if you don't even make the bench through no fault of your own, but just that. There's so many other good players, um, and and the manager's got to make a choice. That's a diff- that's a bit of pill to swallow, but yeah. the reality is that we've got a, it's a squad game, and and um, if if form doesn't play in a cup final, it won't be forgotten that his efforts along the way would. No, would have, I mean he'd still get a medal if we won it, or if we, even if we lost it, he'd still get a silver medal. Yeah, you call it a loser's medal, but. Which they did in the old days, as I recall. I think, I think he would just... still get a medal, wouldn't he? I mean, one way or the other, um, whether he plays or not, if we won or lost, he'd get either a winner's or a loser's medal. So, for being part of the squad that actually played so many games and got us there, I so think that's right. If 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 we are to to go all the way to Wembley, we've got to first get past Colchester. We've got them next a week today. Um, it's a twelve forty-five kickoff in the UK. Um, I'm going to hold my hands up here. I don't know a great deal about <laughs> Colchester, other than other than the fact that I think they're twen- they're third from bottom in in League One, um, and Colchester is is an Essex, I believe. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is. It's on the A12. It's on the way up when I visit Grot Bags at school. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's town, a very isn't it? Sorry. I think it's the oldest inhabited town in England or something. Yeah, it's beautiful. an old Roman town, isn't it? So they have a relatively Excellent. new state stadium that sits off the side of the A12 yeah. Um, and yeah that pretty much sums up my knowledge as well yeah um, so we're going to play I mean, it, it's a given we're going to play probably Vaughan and um, similar team to be played on Wednesday yeah yeah, yeah guess so. um, but it's still going to be it's, it's still it will still be a strong team nonetheless um, against not being disrespectful but inferior opposition um, quick predictions um, I, I, I'm not good at predicting, and I don't really like predicting because uh, <laughs> I don't want to put the kiss of death on any anybody. But I would like to say that we should um, get a win, and it should be to nil. Um, um, and I was going to say to add to the things that you said earlier about the team news, I, I wouldn't mind if he starts people like Onomar, maybe Harry Winks. Uh, and players like that to to get them bloodied in, if you like. I mean, Onomar played the other day and played really well, uh, and liked the look of him a lot. Um, I think I think we should win the game. Um, I'm not going to put a scoreline on it, but I think it should be something to nil. Okay, um, I'm going to take a slightly more conservative a- a- approach. Um, because I know next to nothing about Colchester and I'm going to assume it's going to be cold and windy and we're not going to have our regular centre-back pairing so I'm going to give them give them, them the benefit of the doubt and say they're going to score a goal um, but we're going to win it 2-1 2-1 that's tight OK, so I went for 4-0 today so I was slightly awry with the scoreline but I was right with the number of goals mm-hmm. um, so I'm going to take credit for that because uh, obviously it was all because of me um, but we really should be going to Colchester and thrashing the ass off them I know it's a cup tie and it adds a little bit of glamour but I'd be and I'm happy that we you know give them a goal as a consolation or whatever but we should be seriously thumping these guys doesn't matter what team we put out so yeah, uh, yeah 4-1 yeah we're giving them a goal 4-1 mm, nice yeah okay um, we'll do some questions in a minute um, Bex, the Spurs ladies played in the middle of the week. Um, how did they do? Oh, uh, you know, so this was their first game since December the 20th. And, um, yeah, they did okay. They played in the Ryman's Cup semi final and they thrashed West Ham by five whole goals to nil, which is a very lovely scoreline, isn't it? Not only is it West Ham, but also the girls won and it was a semi final. So that makes it extra, extra special. <laughs> and who do they. Who do they play in the in the, in the final? Don't know because the other semi final doesn't play until Wednesday. Okay, and it's I think Charlton are 
playing in that. In yeah, they are, and I don't yeah. know who else they're playing against. So Bianca Baptiste was one of the scorers. Wendy Martin got a penalty. Um, Avila Bergin got another one, and then she got another one, and then it was just all fantastic. So we don't know where or when the final is. I can't get any information out of the team, but I did hear something back to say that they haven't actually confirmed the date yet. And I don't know if that's because the two semi-finals were postponed so because of that they may maybe move the forward that moved the final forward to another date and location because this should have been played a couple of weeks back should have and um we'll we'll, we'll talk in a minute about i think their game tomorrow but what's the other bit of exciting news about the spurs <laughs> ladies <laughs> following following on from that five nil win they're all so, playing <laughs> very shush very excited they're dedicated sportswomen they don't do stuff like that so very excitedly um, Javad emailed the team and asked in light of the fact that they're through to a final if we could go and interview them so a couple of the players uh, he mentioned Avila Bergin who scored on Thursday and Jenna Scalacci who's the skipper if we could go and have a chat with them um, the team have come back and initially said yep okay we'll do it on a Wednesday at Hotspur Way before they, the girls start training on a Wednesday night. So we've just to settle dates um, and hopefully we're going to record that and that'll be on the pod in a couple of weeks as and when we get a chance to talk to them. Absolutely. Yep. Very, very exciting. Um, looking, looking forward to that one. It's hugely um, excited. I've got all little girly. And... <laughs> it's so are exciting. you shaking a rattle or something? <laughs> No, no, no. A little baby's rattle. I'm saying. really, 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 really pleased. And yeah. I, yeah, it's very exciting. It'd be fantastic to go and talk to the girls. And the proviso is that we don't mention the men's game. And I have no desire to talk about no. the guys' and, team. And, and nor should we. It's about them. Exactly. And, and um, when I emailed, um, well, I emailed Karen Hills, who's, who's the manager, but also um, it went to the PR manager at Spurs. Um, and. Um, the initial email that I sent to them, um, we, we mentioned that, as far as I know, that we're the only Spurs podcast out there hitherto that that provides an update on the Spurs ladies every week. And and I think because we do, I think it's really important that that we get a chance to speak to them and yeah. give them a bit of a platform. Um, and yeah, it's it's about them. It's not about um, it's not about not about the guys. Of course, we. we, we it's a Tottenham podcast, so we talk all things Tottenham. But um, the interview that we're going to do with them will be um, exclusively about them and their progress in the competition and various other things. So, if um, anybody's got any questions, yep, you know how to get in touch with us. Yep. Um, so you can. There's a Facebook page. You can um, you contact us on Twitter um, at thf podcast. Um, it's a Twitter handle. Um, and we'll, we'll, as and when we get more details, we will um, um, announce that. But hopefully, as Beck said, that will be something that will happen in the, within the next few weeks. Um, they're playing tomorrow as well, aren't they? They are. They play tomorrow in the league, assuming that all goes ahead. They're playing at Coventry. So uh, that's a two o'clock kickoff, and we'll probably get a, an update on the scoreline about Wednesday because the girls aren't good at or the PR team that sits behind it aren't that good about updating people as to games that have gone on but so there you go nice to be playing since they haven't played since december absolutely okay um we'll do some questions in a minute um just um well actually uh, something something you, you mentioned before the podcast bex um the last podcast that we did we talked about skippers and we had a discussion on who if Lloris wasn't captain, who 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 would make a good skip, skipper? So Walker captain the side on Wednesday. Um, what do you both think in terms of the job that he did? I thought he did a very good job, uh, to be honest. Uh, I kept I kept an eye on him. He looked very very vocal more than yes. usual. And um, you know, not only did he look good going forward, he also did a very good job defensively. Um, and he made one or two really good covering challenges, you know, sort of out of position, but covering um, um, sort of to the left of the box instead of to the right of the box, if you know what I mean, where the ball's gone over the uh, the back, the, the last centre half. He's got across and made a nice covering challenge. So um, I think that giving it to Walker, I think I heard the other day that he he's the most... 
senior guy in the team. Or he was the most senior guy in the team, especially that night. Yeah, so we discussed that last week. And I, when Danny Rose was made skipper for the original game, I wasn't sure if Poch did it because he was the most senior or you know, he had been at Spurs the longest or if the players had voted for it. But looking at the fact that Walker was given the skipper the captaincy on Wednesday, it does rather seem that Poch has gone, OK, you're the most senior player at the club. Therefore, it should be you. But I don't think it did Walker's game any harm. I think maybe it made him think a little bit more I think it about made what him he was doing. Um, but yeah, you, I agree. He was very vocal. He was very involved all over the pitch, much more so than normal. I mean, just by be, being given the captain to see if that makes you play that much better. And he did look a lot better than, you know. I mean, as I said earlier, he, he's played really well this season, but he looked extra. But it's stuff. awareness as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's that extra level of responsibility that sometimes makes you think, maybe I'm not going to make that decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wait and see how things go. And maybe we should give the captaincy to Deli Alley on those grounds because sometimes he does slightly rash things. But maybe that's what it is about Carl Walker. It just kind of settled his game a little bit <clears> because he had that added responsibility. Yeah, he tried to get um, uh, Kabai done today, didn't he? He stuck a nice knee into his shoulder. I think Kabai made too much of it. Uh, yeah, I did ask if there was a sniper in the crowd that I'd missed somewhere that apparently yeah. had shot Kabai because yeah. I could see no other reason for that kind of reaction. But I think that was a, that knee was a very deliberate from Ali. Definitely, it was definitely. very disingenuous. It was very because it's very hard to say to him you did that deliberately because yeah. you you know it because he of the way it, he was running on to Kabai. Yeah, he made it look like the momentum couldn't yes, stop itself. And, absolutely, but I think that was very disingenuous of him, and he I absolutely like meant to do it. <laughs> I know Nicky's got a reserves about him, but I like it. You, n- you need to play like that in your team. Um, um, sorry, to go back to the captain's thing, I would definitely think that uh, Eric Dyer is future captain material for Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, and I think that he could possibly be our next Grand Robert. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but... No, absolutely. Definitely, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I think he can do that. I thought Walker did Walker Walker did okay um, uh, on on Wednesday um, in terms of the captaincy, and I think once again it sort of exemplifies the fact that we've got so many good players that have got leadership qualities and and and, and can do it do a good job. Um, and I agree, probably going forwards, one for the future is Eric Dyer. Um, having said that, and I don't want to go back to last week's questions but I will um, I'm still quite happy with Lloris um, all I say is Dino's off 1982 um, Casillas at Madrid and the German goalkeeper whose name escapes me Neuer yeah all captains so I, I, I I'm quite comfortable and happy with, with Lloris being skipper but um... nobody's unhappy it's an alternative Anyway, I mean, the team has skippers and vice skippers. So if if uh, Larice wants to get a message across to uh, somebody, he can just give it to the vice skipper who should be playing at the same time and tell them to, you know, have a word with that guy up there. He's not doing his job properly. We, we've got we've got a number of players that can fulfil that role, but we've also got a number of players that, irrespective of whether they've got the armbands, show leadership qualities and yeah. most of all take responsibility. Um, yeah. And aren't afraid to give another player a bollocking um, if need be. Yeah. Um, okay, Michael John Bede asks, do you prefer the word striker or forward, and what's the difference? Um, for me, this is just a question of semantics, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you were going to ask me to interpret it, I would say a striker is um, a centre forward. Uh, 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 you know, whether that be a, a, a poacher like Gary Lineker or. or Harry Kane type player that can hold the ball up and get goals. Um, a forwards could mean many things. Yes, it could could also mean a striker or a centre forward in the traditional sense, but it could mean somebody that's a deep lying centre deep lying centre forward, uh, like a sort of Teddy Sheringham type player, or or as we talked about earlier, some somebody coming from a deeper role, running at people um, and and. and um, chipping in with, with, with the occasional goal but really I think it's about semantics and, and how, you, how you interpret that word yeah. yep I don't care <laughs> I think they're interchangeable well they are pretty much now players aren't so locked in position as they used to be so it, it's very easy you know we've seen Harry Kane back defending 
Yeah. Is that something that would have happened 20, 30 years ago? Definitely not. Uh, is that something Jermaine Defoe would do? Because he actually is your archetypal striker, isn't he? He is the Gary Lineker style goal hanger. He doesn't go back from the forward line, from the halfway line. He's he is where he is. Um, but we don't have that anymore. We have players that go where they're needed. But apart from that, I'm really not fussed one way or another. Dare I say it, we have footballers in, in, in the Ajax sense. Yep. Um, I know that they play in positions and ultimately you think of Jan as a defender and Toby as a defender, but there's so much more, more than that, which actually reminded me during the game there was a passage of play, I think just before we scored, I think just before um, Harry Kane scored the equaliser when... Toby was pushing forward in, in an attack and he stayed up. He didn't then drop back. He was still up there in, in, in around the box and yeah, played, a, played a part in the goal, I think. Yeah, that's right. I mean, because Palace were all sitting back and so why not push forward and, and sort of help the, the guys up front because there was no danger of them getting back at us uh, at all. So, uh, I, I would have imagined in that scenario, whilst maybe I was concentrating on the sort of forward passage, passage of play and maybe obviously but TV screen is, is also concentrating on that um, I would imagine that in that scenario somebody in midfield would have um, I think Dyer was off the pitch at that point but somebody would have dropped back and played in defence um, in, in uh, as Toby pushed forward and, and in, in, which is really if you go back to the IX way or the total football way that's about it's about exactly that it's about players um, slotting into other positions so if a, if a defender goes forward um, and has confidence to do that somebody else can slot in and um, and, and play in that role and play yeah. adequately yeah. yep absolutely and everybody does go where they're needed yeah. and I think that's really important again it, that's all about the team it's not about individual players it's not them saying I'm a striker therefore it's about this is where the team needs me most yeah, I mean, when, you're, when yeah. you're a striker, everyone's depending on you, aren't they? That's why everyone's talking about Kane and, and Jesus, we have to get someone else in because when Kane's injured, we, we're going to be in trouble and all that sort of stuff. You know, um, I, I was watching football when we had inside forwards and outside forwards and centre forwards and, and that sort of thing. But um, today, a striker is the guy who's supposed to hit the goals, isn't he? Um, and the forwards sort of assist him. But the way I see it is like... Bex said, I don't really care, you know, as long as uh, we're sharing the goals around the team and we're scoring, it doesn't matter. Does it? Absolutely. Yeah, you know. I had the resident Leicester fan at work message me on Thursday morning to say, yeah, you were really lucky and um, you really need another striker. And I said, OK, that's fine. Thanks very much for your comments. But yeah. last night's game just proved that we've got it going on all over the pitch. Yeah, that yeah. isn't just our focal point. And Leicester didn't have that on Wednesday night, but we clearly did. They don't have the squad strength to push for Champions League and manage in the league and have a good cup run. Yeah, but they, they, they. Um, but we do. Yeah, they relied that if if Mares and uh, Vardy came on, that we were going to be in trouble after that. Uh, after we went two 0 up or something like that, it was stupid. Anyway, let's skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, next question. Paul Ethel asks: um, We've all heard the expression "I take a draw right now." <laughs> so, would the Podsters take fourth right now, or do you think we can? Or do you think we can? Oh, fuck's sake. Do you, or do, do you think we can or will do better than fourth? Um, I said it on the pod a few weeks ago um, that I thought we'd win the double, um, and I did concede that maybe I was being a slightly delusional um i i honestly think we can i really do um and no i wouldn't settle for fourth um i think third is within reach definitely um, doable isn't yep. it definitely yep. doable Absolutely. but I, I don't see any reason why we won't why I don't see any reason why we can't win the title and win the FA Cup. And we're also in the Europa League. And I know it might be a tall order, but when I look at the squad, when I look at the team, when I look at the manager, um, we just we look strong. And I look at the other teams in the Premier League and, and I really think that we there's no reason we, we, we can't do it. Um, or we can't go all the way. And if I go back to a um, conversation we were having earlier at the beginning of the pod, it might have been before we started, I can't recall. Um, Ali... Um, now, I mean, I've been following Spurs for 25, 26 years. Um, you've been following Spurs for a bit longer than I have, um, and, 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 and yourself, Bex. Um, <laughs> Steady. Um, other than the double-winning team, the 60s, um, 
the, there are two sides, and this is just from my knowledge and history, but I wasn't, I don't have any memory of it at the time. But in the 1980s, we had two sides. We had the the, the early 80s, sort of 81, 82 period, when when um, we had uh, your Aussies and your Ricky Veers and Glenn Hoddles and um, Tony Galvin and Graham Roberts, all of that. And then there was also the 86-87 season when I think Pleat was manager yeah. And, yeah. and Clive Allen got 49 goals and we were pushing for the title. Waddle. Um, yeah. Hoddle, Waddle. Um, I think we played five across the mid- midfield yeah. then. And, and we played mainly, yeah. And Cl- Clive Allen on, on his own and we were we were fighting in three competitions. As I, as I, as, and from what I gather, we were in the semi-finals of the League, League Cup and lost to Woolwich, um, got to the mm-hmm. FA Cup final, obviously lost yeah. 4 to Coventry and we... I think Coventry we... tried to nick the beer off me that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we finished in the league, I think it might have been third, third or fourth. I think. Third, okay. I think, yeah. um, so that two different teams in the 80s, how, how, do, how does that period compare with today? Because the nearest, in my time as a Spurs fan, the nearest time that I felt really excited and I thought, wow, we're going to do something, was that 2011-2012 season when Red Ant was manager, the final season when Red Ant was manager and we had Bale and and Modric and Van der Vaart. Van der Vaart. And that season, it was really special. And I remember talking with an older fan and he said to me that it, it felt like the 87 season. How does this compare to the teams we had in the 80s? Yeah, I mean it's hard to it's hard to sort of compare, isn't it? Because we've got it's really still unknown, isn't it? I mean these guys are so young, um, they're so fresh, they, they're sort of just following instructions and doing what they're supposed to do uh, to the letter of the parch, um, and results are just you know seeming to go our way. The you know the other teams that you mentioned had had stars and players and and people like that, but I don't think we've got a sort of out and out star have we at the moment apart from the guys who are self making themselves but in terms of exp- expectations i mean i i feel very optimistic and i've, and I've seen lots of i've seen lots of false da- dawns along, along the way but i feel really positive um uh, and i genuinely when i say i think we can win the title and the fa cup i think that is whether we do or not it's a different matter but I've, i really think that's that is a, a possibility there is no reason why we can't um but I don't know from an expectation level how that compares with back then. Anybody? <laughs> I don't. Um, I mean, I was much younger. Uh, she says, honestly. Um, so yeah. it's hard. It, it's hard to get that kind of clarity. You know, at the time I was doing GCSEs, I was studying, and I had a lot going on. But that eighty-seven season was just outstanding. It was just amazing, and I think now is different because I'm an old person and I get to watch. And the other thing is, you get to watch a lot more games these days, so you can judge. You're not just getting reports in the paper. So I don't know. I mean, it's that, the expectation level, isn't it? It's what you expect. And at the time, it, that '87 season, it was still quite fresh in the mind. You know, we'd had a couple of FA Cup victories earlier in that decade, whereas now we've got we've had nothing to shout about for years. <laughs> So now it's. Re- I think it's more exciting in a way because it's not expected. If yeah, that makes sense. It was quite a different era, though. I mean, everybody was sort of on an even keel to start off with, and not, you know, there were not, not many sort of billionaire owners who were just chucking money uh, into the clubs like your Abramoviches and uh, etc. Um, um, so people were starting off at the same time, the uh, same way, you know, same sort of wage structures and whatever. Um, and it was it was more or less down to the manager and the, what he had in his mind. And I think around about the eighty-seven time when Pleat took over, he, he sort of did something different. He he kind of we played four five one most of the time, and our midfield was unbeatable really. Um, and Clive Allen was a goal poacher uh, extreme. You know, he was the best sort of that you could have around at the time. I mean, forty-nine goals in one season was sort of almost unheard of in the English league. So, it was very special. Yeah, it was really special, you know. And I was at that game. It was <laughs> an awful to to go ahead so early, and you know? I thought, oh no, <laughs> too early. <laughs> uh, but anyway. but okay. But but well, let me ask a question in a different way. Sorry, I, I, I know I'm probing a bit, but um, 
the expectation okay. is high at the moment. Again, going back to some of the previous teams that I've watched in, in the last 25, 26 years, um, there was always points, like taking that Red Nap team, for instance, there were weak links in the team. Yeah. Um, there were moments where you thought, do you know what, we're going to throw it away, or we're not going to last the pace, or something's going to happen, or we're, or we're going to go to Goodison Park on a wet Wednesday and we're going to fuck it up. I can't see those frailties in this team. That for me, that's a difference. And I don't, I don't know if, if there's been a Spurs team. So that certainly hasn't in my time, I think. But I don't know beyond that whether there has been a team where you think, actually, do you know what? P- putting aside the the the, the glitz and the flair and the skill of, you know, of of say Aussie and Hoddle and 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 all of that, whether there's been a team or a squad and a manager that's just you've just looked at it and you think. He's strong. He's strong. There, are, there are very few weak, weak links. And the one, the one or two weak links that, are, that are there, um, Fazio, for example, um, well, aren't really parts of the um, the team. Is he? Up. Yeah, he's, he's out of it. I mean, it's not. There is no. There are no weaknesses as far as I can see. Um, well, no, it's a bit pushing it, really. I suppose, um, but. Uh, Poch seems to have just weeded those out, hasn't he? So, mm. um, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we we uh, don't have too many weaknesses. Um, to answer the the question, I think that this is the most exciting time we've we've had since those days that you mentioned. Um, today, when we went one down, I, I didn't fear one bit. No. Not at all. I just thought we were going to get in, get back into this, and probably win the game. Knew uh, it was going to happen at some stage because that's the way yeah. it is. Yeah, because a, a year or two ago we would have said, "Ah, oh, fuck, we've lost this game." Yeah. Um, you know, and it's a crappy side like Palace. You know, some sort of what happened to Newcastle a couple of weeks ago. Um, that was a one-off. Before it would have been more than a one-off. Uh, now it's not a one-off. Uh, sorry, now it's a one-off, uh, and it was a blip. Today we went one down, we went one down against Sunderland, but we came back and we won comfortably and we were comfortable in the game. So the way I see it is we, we don't really have too many problems and we are weeding out the bad stuff. So Adebayo is gone. <laughs> um, looks like Townsend could be gone. Fazio might go. Um, and we Should go. With, should go. And we're left with people who want to play with uh, Poch and who Poch trusts, and he's not scared to give them all a go and stick them in the team and, um, you know, do what they're told. And it sounds like he's a very fair person, but a very tough person as well. Uh, and he's laid it on the line to them, do it or get out. And that's how it's gone. So I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I feel very confident this year that we do something. Fourth or higher, I would have said before I'd be disappointed. Uh, I'd be happy to get fourth, but I'd be a little bit disappointed with fourth. I think this season. I think now at this stage of the season, look at where we are. Look at the players we have. I think to to finish fourth now, when there's a possibility we could have done better. Yeah. I think that's where you start to think. Oh, really? Only fourth? Yeah. Whereas if it's somebody had said to you at the start of the season, yeah. how'd you fancy fourth? You would have taken it without a shadow of a doubt. Exactly. But we're not vying with Chelsea. We're probably vying a little bit with Man U. Um, but we're vying not with after Leicester. today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's Leicester that's up there. And I've still, I still got this feeling that Leicester are going to sort of drop away. And if they don't, it doesn't bother them so much. So long as we do our stuff. You know, Absolutely. Fighting. We, we usually fight. We're usually outside fourth and fighting for fourth. And we might aim, uh, end up sort of fifth. Uh, this time, why don't we aim for higher? If the players believe it, let them go for it. Aim higher and finish third, finish second, but aim higher. You know. I think that's what Poch has in mind. So we, we had a follow-up question from that from Nick Phil, and uh, he says, "How confident are you of finishing in the top four this season? Percentages, please." Um, I presume that we're all confident yeah 120 odd percent or something that yeah. i would be gutted if we let it slip now because we've been there for so much of the season absolutely yeah and um, we absolutely uh, completely deserve to be there we yeah. haven't had fluky results no. it's not that everything else has gone our way we have completely deserved that, that this season yeah I mean, we've, we've had too many goals if i was to be a bit of- yeah we know that 
But uh, then today was one of those days that we could have had the draw. Exactly. And we, we didn't. Uh, the other thing that's sort of pissing me off a little bit is the fact that the media are sort of rounding up on us and saying that Man United and Chelsea are after Poch and that sort of stuff, you know. So hopefully he'll be a proper man and just stay with us. And I'm them. happy they're saying that. I like they're saying that. Poch isn't going to go anyway. He's certainly not going to work for Abramovich with his, you know, because even AVB that last week has had a bit pop at yeah, Abramovich yeah. and his ability to get rid of managers at the drop of a hat. Yeah. So, Poch isn't going to go to Chelsea. He's certainly not going to go to that poison challenge that is Man United. Why would he want to leave at the moment where he has everything? He has a chairman that believes in him. He has a, exactly. a squad that completely believe in him. Exactly. He can do what he likes. Nobody's questioning what he's doing. Everybody's happy. I'm going to slip, slip, slip my neck out on the line here and, 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 uh, Rebel. Uh, and, and make a prediction, which is this. Um, if you look at the, the other team... Um, that uh, is cohabiting, um, uh, squatting in North London. Mm, um, I'd rather not. Uh, the, the, they they employed a French manager back in 1996, and 20 years on, he's still there. And I can see two things happening: either Pochettino, and he's got a good relationship with Levy, it would appear, and he's he's building something, and there's a new stadium as well. Either he will be there for, because I don't want to say that length of time, but but a considerably long time, or I could see possibly maybe 2019, 2020. Mm-hmm. He's on a five-year contract, so that's he's two years into it. I could foresee at that point he would leave and take over the Argentina. Argentina. Argentine. National Argentine. team. National team, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Maybe, but I... Um, and that's fine. I, I, you know what? I wouldn't begrudge him if he did that. I would. I can't, I can't, I, I, well, well, yeah, well, but, 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 but I'd rather that than he go to another another team, whether that's United or Real Madrid. And frankly, I can't. I don't actually envisage, maybe I'm being very short-sighted and naive, but I can't for a minute envisage at this moment in time that he would go and manage another club side. Why would he? No, Why exactly. Would he, yeah. Why would he want to go and start all over again when he's really, really got something going here? Everyone's starting to believe in him, including the uh, twatty fans that we have. Not all of the fans, obviously, <laughs> because most of the fans do believe in him. But some of the others are sort of stupid. But everyone's believing in him, from the chairman down to the sort of tea lady, if you like. Uh, and yeah, I'm not phased. I don't think he's going to. He's not going to rush off, is he? Yeah, he's not going to do that. a Harry. I don't think he's not going to yes. get the whiff of a job that he thinks is better, and his focus is suddenly going to dissolve. I don't yeah. see that happening with Poch. Yeah. Until he's achieved what he wants. And he is as much about proving himself as about proving anything else. That's he's right. still very young in managerial circles. Well, he's certainly doing all right with us, so I'm quite happy to keep him forever. Yeah. He, <laughs> he could absolutely stay. I'm good with that. Marriage made in heaven. Correct. Okay. Um, we've got about three or four questions. I want to quickly just go through these. Um, at all, to- at all, Tomar at eighty on the school Spurs asks, "What does the future hold for Nabil Bentalab? Can you see him becoming a first team regular again?" Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong. He's just got to fight for his place again. Yeah. A healthy competition. You know, the guy got injured. He he's been out a bit, but he's been good for a long time. Um, and. Um, He's just got to fight for his place. It's healthy competition. That's all like the way I see it. And like a few cup games we've got coming up, he'll be getting more and more game time, giving the others a rest, getting fitter and fitter, and uh, and then the competition will really be hotted up uh, and you know ready to go. So um, yeah, I think he's got a good future with us. Um, and equally, why would he want to leave at the moment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think he'd leave. I mean, unless somebody came in and. Offered big bucks, but again, nah. would he actually want to leave? You know, nah. a great squad. He's enjoying it. Let's let's face the facts. Last season, he was he was an integral part of the squad, the team, even. Yeah. And and we were we were talking about him in the summer, um, possible uh, future captain and 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 one of the regulars in the team. And then he started the season didn't do too well against United and then I think it might have been the Leicester game possibly I can't recall um, he got injured and 
and that's it. He got injured. Other people came in the team. They did a good job. Um, and they've the, the people that have come in have cemented their place in the team. And now he's finding his way back from injury, and that's going to take some time. But there were one or, one or two signs, I think, um, midweek, and then again today when he came on. In fact, I, I don't know who he came on for today. It was sort of happened fairly quickly, and I just was surprised to suddenly see him. But I thought he did okay. Um, had the confidence to shoot and force um, their goalkeeper to make a save. Um, yeah, he, he's going to run, st- didn't he, to get, yeah. get up to that position to have a, a shot at goal. He's going to slowly find his way back back into the team. As as for example, I think Chadley will. Now he's he scored midweek and he scored again today. That'll do his confidence good. So I thought he came on for Ericsson. He came on for Ericsson. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did. Okay, so um, what a headache for Poch. <laughs> a good one. A good one. It's yeah. just good. It, it must be. How do you balance all of this? Thank Christ, we're still in a cup competition, and we've got the league, and we've got Europa League coming up later this month. Oh, later. Yeah. Next I month, think, I think because otherwise, it. how do you keep all of these players happy when they're playing yeah. at a decent standard? Yeah, um, the thing is, we've got no superstars, so they're not demanding to be played every week, and that's the difference. I think that's that's where this kind of squad is better than having your Ali Bayors and and to some extent, you know, your Modrishes and Bales and Van der Bars, You know, uh, that the fact that you know these guys trust in the manager and they will get game time. I mean, you know, people like v- Wimmer. Uh, and even Fazio, I mean, they're not complaining that they're not playing much. They're just waiting for their opportunity to Fazio's play. Fazio's just taking his money and then he can fuck well, he off, is, basically, yeah. because nobody wants him. But uh, Vimmer is very much part of the team and he's needed, but Fazio will never appear in a spare shirt again. Yeah. And anyone who sort of jumps out of line, uh, a la Andros Townsend. Wow, is, wow. Look at it. he's still there. He's well, there, but he's, yes. he's there, but as soon as we get the, um, the right offer, he's going to be gone. You, Bex, you, you, you tweeted a question on, on Twitter, which I was going to save, but fuck it, we'll just read it now. Um, Townsend, um, you say, good deal to let him go and how much, and for how much, or should we keep him? Well, given what he did last season, um, he did okay for us last season, he broke into the England squad, there was the whole, oh, he's the new saviour of England, dear God. Um, I don't know, do we let him go? Do we keep him? Is he worth that much money? Is Steve McLaren taking the piss? And Newcastle taking the piss. Have Spurs got something else lined up for him in the background? Is that why they want him to stay? No, I think he's blown it. I think he's blown it when he had that argument with uh, one of the coaching staff. Um, so was I think that people... after the Monaco game at home or after the Anderlecht uh, game? Yeah, yeah, one of the one of the European games. He, he sort of had an argument. With... It was Villa, Villa on the Monday. <laughs> All right, I'm was... completely wrong then. I thought it was a Europa League game. Oh. It was, I, I think it was Villa on the Monday. We, we did play Andalus on the following Thursday. I'm pretty sure it was Villa. But anyway, okay. well, he, by, by and by. The guys. Yeah, he apologised, but it just proves his temperament. The thing but is, isn't, he, isn't that explainable because he's young and he just he's really keen and he wants to play? Yeah, maybe, but but you know you can only push the guy so far. A manager that is. If the man, if I've been a manager, not of a football team, but I've been a manager, and as soon as a guy sort of pushes your wrong buttons and stuff like that, if you don't like the guy and you don't trust him, there's just not nothing you can do about it. It's going to be hard for him to prove himself. He's, you know, I watched the under 21s against Chelsea the other day, um, and yeah, he played well, but he's supposed to because he's he's the star in that team and you know he done quite well but he really didn't look interested to be honest with you not at all he absolutely looked disinterested and um yeah he got a goal i think he got a couple of goals actually but uh, he looked completely disinterested he looks like he wants to be out because he's only playing with the under 21s you know he, he'll be a good player for someone uh i don't think he'll be a good player for spurs anymore and i think we should sort of take 12 13 million and get, get him out yeah, I, f- I think we're looking at double figures, 10, 12 million. Um, I think we wanted 14. No, Newcastle, Newcastle allegedly have offered 10 and it's been turned down. The Spurs are saying they want 14, which yeah, kind of well, indicates to me... A compromise, doesn't it? Well, have they got another plan? Has Lee, Do Levy and Poch know something that we don't? Well, I'm sure they know lots that we don't. But why wouldn't they let him go? If he's that much of a troublemaker, if he did it publicly on the pitch... Why not let him go? The first opportunity. Yeah, okay, thanks. So long. Goodbye. See you later. I, th- I think from the from the players' perspective, we've we've got the Euros coming up in in um in the summer in June, and he needs first team football. Yep. So 
Yeah. I think his days at Spurs are numbered, personally. Um, and I think for his own good, it, it would be good if he got moves on to, I don't know, a Newcastle, a West Brom, Stoke City, maybe. Um, someone, someone who's not really you know, up there with us. Not Spurs. Just, just, think about, just think about this for a second. There's this uh, thing with Berahino, right? Isn't Berahino just the same as um, Tan- Townsend? And do you think we'll go for him? Because I don't think mm-hmm. we'll actually go for him now. I, I think he's blown it because of the way he's behaving to his club. Uh, and I think that Poch will say, well, you know. Don't have time for petulant little 20-somethings yeah. who think that they that everything is owed to them on a plate. Don't have time. Go away. I think that I don't think there'll be any incomings in this window. And I think Fazio, if we can get a buyer, will go and possibly Townsend as well. I wouldn't mind if we do go for this other Moussa Dembele because um, he's going to be, he's going to, you know, he's got the criteria, hasn't he, to sit in with a Poch type team to play when he's called upon. He doesn't mind being a backup to Kane because he's not going to replace Kane and we don't want anyone to replace Kane. No. Well, there, there was some talk, I don't know if this is correct, but um, that we would pur- purchase him and then loan him back to Fulham. That um, he doesn't want, what, apparently. Yeah, he doesn't want that, Fulham, apparently. But I don't think he wants it. So uh, if we get him, we, he well, until he comes to Spurs, now his name has been linked. Every, all Spurs fans are going to be looking at him like a fish in an aquarium, aren't they? They're mm-hmm. going to be examining every move that he makes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And assessing okay. whether he's good enough or not. Mm. Yeah. One good thing about it, if we do get him, is when we all sing, oh, Moussa Dembele, he'll think it's for him and it'll lift <laughs> both their spirits. So there you go. Um, let's just wrap this up quickly final final three questions uh, Mark Stoll asks do you see any of the current squad earning a testimonial with us if so who um, he says it's an honest question not a pessimistic bullshit one yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> well I see a few of them actually um, and it all goes down to their age I see Walker Rose and Dyer definitely and Harry Kane okay I'd, uh, I'd add Larice to that as well yeah you would do you not well, think that they're a little outdated Louise, or who do you mean? Testimonials. Yeah. The concept of a testimonial is, is certainly outdated, but. Um, and I know the money goes to charity, and I know that's what they did for Ledley King. But let's let's look, let's look at let's look at it another way. Um, forget the forget the concept itself. A testimonial means what you've you've, it's you've given to, isn't it? It's you've given points to, and... to, to, to ten year service normally. Yeah. Yeah. So, years. isn't that why Dawson was sold? Ooh. Wasn't that just short of his ten years? Just short of his. Yeah, but that's a bit stupid, isn't it? Because uh, no no one has to give him... I am very cynical. Let's just put that into some perspective. Yeah, I didn't think it was stupid. I mean, I I think if we we look at it in terms of... Forget about testimonials. If we talk about it in terms of longevity... Longevity. Longevity. Um, (laughs) Time served. I can see... (laughs) Larice has been there for for four years. I can see him being for another six. Um, Vertonghen, I can see him being there. Um, I think this is going to depend on success, isn't it? Uh, you know, with the if we get, if we start getting some success, maybe an FA Cup or you know, sort of always playing in a Champions League year in year out, plus a new stadium, uh, etc. I think then you can start saying Lloris will want to stay, you know, longer. Um, would think. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. So long as we're successful. You know, I mean, if we don't, if we end up not winning anything and and being nearly boys, you know, some of these guys are going to want to sort of go, aren't they? As long as the right offer comes along. But if we're doing well, then I see no reason why they would want to get out of here. Mm. Okay. Um, Final two questions. Samuel asks, will Deli Ali go to the Euros given his habit of picking up silly bookings by getting involved in needless squabbles? Yes, he'll go. He will go. Roy Hodgson was there today. And after that goal, how could you not take him? How could you, as the England manager, think, no, no, this player has a horrible habit of occasionally throwing the ball in someone's face or knocking them accidentally on purpose. So I'm going to leave him at home. Are you fuck? You're going to be like that. You are. Yeah, you're definitely coming. Make sure you got your passport. Yeah. You're definitely on the squad. Uh, Why? We're just telling him to be careful. You You just say, you know, just go out there and be careful. Yeah, but it's part of his game. It what makes him the player he is. Very hard to take that out. I think without dousing the fire entirely. It is, but 
but there's a fine line between <laughs> there's, there's petulance. Yeah. Um, when 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 Glenn Hoddle was 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 England manager, I remember in um, it was it was a tournament in in '97, Le, Le Tournoi. It was a uh, pre-season um, tournament in France, England, France, Italy, and Brazil took part, and England won that tournament. They picked up a trophy, I think. Maybe there wasn't a trophy, but they, they won that pre-season tournament. And um, Beckham got a booking in. It might have been the France game, possibly, which was the second match, and um, it put him out of the next game. And it was for something petulant. And Glenn Hoddle said, not for the first time, that David's got a watch that side of his game <laughs> 12 months later <laughs> Beckham flipped out and by the way I've, I've got I personally have got no issues with Beckham for doing that I think I'm one of the few people who um, at the time I, I didn't have an issue with, with him doing that and I thought the referee was harsh and I thought that that, that the way that Beckham was treated by um, the fans, by, yeah. by, by the by media our, by the media but also by, by our fans afterwards wasn't acceptable but it does highlight the point that you need, you've got to be careful, particularly, particularly at international level. There are certain things you can get away in the Premier League um, that you wouldn't with an international referee. So that's the only thing that concerns me about Zeli Ali. But should he go to the Euros? Absolutely. OK, the... well, today the knee in um, Dubai could have been explained, it, and as Ali said earlier, was the momentum carrying him on. And last week, oh, I didn't know the guy was so, you know, when he threw the ball in Van Al Holt's face, I didn't know he was quite so close behind me. And those are the little snippets that as Spurs fans, we absolutely adore. And those are the ones that you can't actually, a, a, an official couldn't walk up to and say, you did that deliberately, because it's explainable that he didn't. It's not outwardly malicious. They are borderline sly. But it's very hard to punish those. And that's why he will go. I don't think Poch will ever say to him, take that out of your game. He might say to him, look, be careful today because we don't need you to get booked because you'll miss the next game. Poch said some game. great things midweek, actually, about that. Yeah. So, you know, the whole, sometimes it's like a naughty child. Sometimes you need to tell them outright. Sometimes you need to show them. You need to temper it with love and affection. And sometimes it's a sit down, you've screwed up. Yeah. And I think that's absolutely the way to go. Because if you say to yeah. Ali, straight up, you fucked up, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. He's yeah. going to go, all right, boss, whatevs. Yeah. I tell you what, but, though, next time you watch a Spurs game and Deli Ali's playing, listen very carefully. You always hear Pot shouting out, Ali, Ali, <laughs> <laughs> five, six, seven times in a game. I think he works that guy so much, it's unbelievable. You listen to it next And time. I'm happy for that to happen yeah. because he gets his great results. Yeah, exactly. I think just just on the England thing, I think the bigger question isn't whether Dali Dali Ali will, will, will go or not. I think that's a given, and I think Harry, Harry Kane will be be there at the Euros. I think that, and this is really a question for another pod because we're, we don't have the time today, and, and p- perhaps one will one will address later on later on in the season as as the Euros get closer. Whether Eric Dyer will go? Now I assume he would, and I would. I would certainly have him in the squad, but I was very surprised earlier in the season that he didn't feature as much as he should have. And, Wasn't he picked for the under twenty ones? He was picked for the under twenty ones, but but he but Deli Ali jumped ahead and was picked for the senior side. Um, yeah, I, I think I, that I, might I do change. recall. I do I do recall Dyer did also play against France afterwards, but Dyer was picked for the under twenty ones, and he sort of. Backed out of it, didn't he? He said, "I'm going to stay at yep. home. I'm going to work on Play my game." Like that. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so, and then he got picked for the um, the A team, the England A team, which for me is a good sign because it means, yeah, he backed out of going to uh, the championships, which was in the Czech Republic, um, um, and they didn't hold any grudges against him for that. Uh, and you know, he's he's. He got into the England team on merit, whether they were just looking at him or not, or or something like that. I'm not sure. But, the yeah. thing is, if Roy Hodgson goes to a Spurs match now, he's not focusing on one player. Of course not. It's across the, the it's play. across the pitch. He wants to see how everybody behaves. Yeah, I mean, we're we're a feeder club for England. Come on, uh, we are at the moment. Pochettino is a feeder feeder manager. He's yeah. a feeder for, manager for, for, for England. Nine out of seventeen. Both at Southampton and, and at Spurs, and uh, well, I say manager, coach in terms of player development, really. Yep. 
Um, okay, final question, and it's a bit tongue in cheek, I'd imagine. Nick Phil asks, "What month will we turn Spursy again?" He says, "I think March." I'm going to punch Nick when I next see him because I very much hate that <laughs> word, Spursy. Luckily, that you, luckily, <laughs> you see him. That means that, yeah, you're going to a game together with you all together. That would be nice. But yes, traditionally March. Traditionally, we are in the minus goal difference. Traditionally, we are outside the top four looking to get in. And this season we, isn't a tradition. So it, to, it, This season is not a traditional season. We are in an untraditional season. So I'm going to sing, no more Spursy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind the word. I know, Bex, you're, um, you're not a fan and, and Bardi on the fighting cock and, and various other people are aren't a fan of Spurs, Spursy word, like, the word Spursy I guess because it's got negative connotations mm. I don't mind it in so far as to me Spursy means typical Spurs but that can be mean good or bad really no um, I mean it, well, me it just it's means it's fucking up good. doesn't it yeah well I mean if, I don't know it, yeah it's a perception thing I mean, if um, we start getting consistently good we, and we're going to be Spursy again exa- exactly, exactly in a good way in a, in a good way um, I don't think um you know, March is March is the, the point in time when we tend to start to March April where we, we just you know maybe those last ten games we start to um, I don't know whether it's we just don't have the mental the focus um, slips or something focus, happens or, yeah, or yeah. It's fatigue or, or, or whatever they're not I think they're, Pochettino the England manager's job are they so don't worry about no <laughs> no and he hasn't got a dog called Rosie um, <laughs> but he doesn't uh, attack Haven. No? Okay. No. So, um, yeah, I, I get the um, the theory behind the word, Nick. I just don't like the word itself, but hopefully it's not going to happen this year. Nothing this year has gone according to previous plans, has it? No. Here we are, end of Jan, fourth, fighting for everything, winning games that previously we'd have just rolled over and lost. Yep. We've got players being selected all over the place for various international teams. We've got a decent squad that actually... Today's starting lineup was mostly internationals. Yeah, and we've got we've got uh, just to hop, hop back to the beginning. We've got the best goal you know, twenty three matches played. That's that's there's only fifteen left. The best goal difference, joint best goal difference with with City. The best defence, even after conceding one today. The best defence um, goal scored forty one. Um, you've got Leicester and forty two, and then. City, I think, on forty four. So even that's not too bad, and 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 that's with one sort of recognised striker, centre forward, whatever you want to call him. Um, <laughs> we really can go places, and I, I and I, sorry to say it again, and I know that maybe people will, will say I jinx it or, or I'm being delete. Did it? I don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> I think that I think we can go all the way, and as Ali said, I think that. If we have a really su- successful season, the definition of the word Spursy can change, um, and it can be synonymous with with, su- with success and hopefully more success. And um, I'm I'm very confident about the future. Okay, yeah. I hope you're right. Um, I've got a question for you. Go on. Do you think about Pardew's Kane comment? If Is this if, the one where he compared him to? If Kane um, was at Palace, we'd be in the top four. <laughs> Fuck off! Now that that is delusional. I mean, it, it's it's not it, just about Harry Kane. It, it, it's about the whole damn team. Dumbass. He's trying to say that he's as good as Poch and that uh, Delaney's as good as the Tonga and and Dan is as good as Alderweireld and yeah. and and all the rest of it. I mean, and his keeper is as good as our keeper. I mean, come on, what is he on? The guy that, should that, be committed. <laughs> no, I don't is, like him that, anyway. He drives me insane and. Kavai is working with the best manager for him because they are one of a kind, the pair of them. Sly, devious, sneaky. I don't like either of them. Mm. But anyway, oh, West Ham have just scored again, so that's 2-1. Nice. Excellent. Valencia's well, just believe, got his I, second. Is it nice I can't believe, yet? can't believe we're cheering West Ham. <laughs> um, I'm glad that Aguero has got a goal because he was in my... Sorry? At least we beat the Pycuses to get to the final. Ladies. Yes. That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, you see, that's the precedent, isn't it? Because last season, the girls got to this cup final and lost to Charlton in the final. And the boys lost the League Cup. So this season, we're yeah. through to the final again. Yeah. Will the boys also get to a cup final? Oh, I hope so. Uh, it's another reflection on our, on our academy, I think, all this. Mm-hmm. You know, since we've had the training centre done and we've changed the way things are happening in the background, we've got... 
Uh, really yep. successful teams coming along, sort of young, yep. younger guys and the girls and everything. So it's brilliant. Well, actually, and uh, what I didn't say earlier, what made Thursday night's game better was the fact that the West Ham ladies team, and I had, did say this earlier in the pod a couple of weeks back, um, they had a grand clear out. They had a new manager and they cleared out six first team players, one of whom was Kenny, Kelly Blanche Flower, who was their skipper at the time. Oh. She came to Spurs and scored. Oh, excellent. Is she related? Sadly not, but no. But, but, that's but a, a nice that's slap in the face for them, I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I digress. Sorry. It's a it's a good time to be, to be a Spurs fan, and um, what, what what with the ladies um, and 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 the and the progress that that Potch is making with 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 the with the men's side, and, and as you say with, with with the stadium, I think we should we should enjoy this time, um, and hopefully there'll be there'll be a lot more um, good things to come. Um, on that note. Um, Ali, thank you um, for joining us for the first time this season. Yeah, it was my pleasure. I'm just going off now to have a um, another all another watch of the Deli yeah. Ali Vine. I think I think we all are. <laughs> um, Bex, thank you as ever. Thank you very much. I've had lots of fun. Right, um, and on that note, um, the future's bright. The future's Lily White. Good night. <laughs> in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.